Welcome to the Yucca Smoke Whiskey Reviews. My name is Brent. If you are a subscriber, I greatly appreciate your support. And if you're not a subscriber and you're into whiskey, please consider hitting that subscribe button with a notification bell. That way you'll be notified of new uploads and live streams. Alright guys, today we have this newly released Baker's Single Barrel Bourbon. Before I get into this whiskey, I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. Baker's Bourbon is part of the original small batch collection which consists of Booker's, Knob Creek, Basil Hayden, and Baker's Bourbon which was created by Jim Beam's sixth generation master distiller, Booker Knoll, and named after the great nephew of Jim Beam, Baker Beam. Baker's Bourbon has transitioned exclusively to this single barrel offering and maintains its minimum seven year age statement and signature 107 proof bottling. This new bottling features de details about the individual barrel, including the age, warehouse where it was aged at, and the date it was barreled. The mash bill on this whiskey is 77% corn, 13% rye, and 10% malted barley. This specific barrel is eight and a half years old, barreled in January of 2011 in Rickhouse CLD. This is 53.5% ABV, 107 proof. The MSRP on this whiskey is 60 bucks, and the previous bottling was around 50. Let's check its bottle out for one second. To me, it reminds me a lot of the Legion bottling from Jim Beam. It looks very similar. It's a synthetic cork. Top of the cork is very nice. It says single barrel right here. Very nice cork. And right here on the top of the label, it tells you what warehouse it was in, how old the whiskey is. This one here is eight and a half years old. And the date it was actually barreled. Definitely a step up on the bottling. Let's get into the color, nose, and taste of this whiskey. Down the color. It's got a nice dark copper color, nice deep copper, amber color to the whiskey. It does seem to be coating the glass fairly well. I remember the previous bottling was very viscous. Yet starting to coat the glass very well. Nice viscosity on the whiskey. Nice color. That being said, let's get into the nose. Start on the nose. All right, right away on the nose, it's definitely kind of jumping out of the glass. You get a nice apple note, some like baked breads. Has a little bit of a nutty, it's like a toasted nut characteristic to it. Maybe like an almond. Some baking spices, caramel, vanilla. And the nose on this, on this whiskey is very dense and rich. Once again, it's uh, apples, caramel, vanilla. It's got like a bready, yeasty note to it also. Baking spices. Some oak is there also. Very nice nose on the whiskey. It's very vibrant. Not, it's, it's, it's very easy to pick through and distinguish the different aromas. It is kind of jumping out of the glass. It is very viscous and oily. As you can see now, again, once again, it's got very thick, heavy legs on the whiskey. Super viscous. Very nice nose on the whiskey. Let's get into the taste. All right, on the taste. Cheers. First thing I want to say is super viscous, very mouth coating. Finish is still going. I'm going to say it's leaning towards the long side of things on the finish. Very viscous whiskey. Let's check the glass out one more time. I don't know if you guys can see it or not. But it's got super thick legs, very viscous whiskey, very mouth coating. On the front of the palate on the first sip, like an apple note, a nice nice apple note mid palate a little bit of citrus zest and like a baked bread and caramel vanilla linger on the finish with a nice oak note on the first sip just going for another one cheers a 
so mouth coating. The whiskey is very, very mouth coating. And it's not like a creamy mouth coating. It's it's just coating the mouth like an oily, nice, rich coating of the mouth. Not a creaminess because it does kind of dry out a little bit on the finish. Very nice and full of flavor. On the front of the palate, it's apples. Apples, and it goes into like a toasted almond note and citrus zest and a little bit of baked bread on the mid palate. But the front of the palate is just pretty much like a fruity, apple-y aspect to the front of the palate. Once again, mid palate, citrus zest, baked bread. It's like a toasted almond. And on the finish, you have caramel vanilla lingering with a nice, a very nice, not overbearing oak note. Very nice second sip. Let's go in for one more, guys. Cheers. The whiskey has been very consistent on each sip. Very nice. Front of the palate, a nice apple note. Maybe even a little bit of a cherry in there now on this sip. Mid palate, toasted almonds, like a nuttiness characteristic. A little bit of baked bread, a little citrus zest on the sides of the palate right here. Lingering on the finish, just caramel, vanilla, and a nice well rounded oak note. Very, very nice third sip on this whiskey. All right, guys, my final thoughts on the Baker Single Barrel Bourbon. I really enjoyed it. I think it is a great pour. I think it offers good, deep, dense flavors. It, it's, it's got a super long finish. It's very viscous. I think it is definitely a step up from their previous offering. But in saying that, I think kind of what they've done with the pricing may be counterproductive in trying to bring this out of the shadows of the small batch collection. By pricing this in the $60 price range, you kind of just priced it with some of the real powerhouses in, in the barrel strength, such as your Stag Juniors, your 1920 Old Forester, and Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. I think maybe with the pricing that could have been counterproductive and trying to pull this out of the shadows, but who knows? We'll see what happens. With that being said, I'm going to wrap this one up. Thank you so much for watching. If you are a subscriber, I greatly appreciate your support. If you're not a subscriber, hey, subscribe. Until next time, guys. Cheers.